morning guys, my name is Phil. Welcome back to Miranda Detailing. In today's episode, we're working on this brand new 2021 Land Rover Discovery. So the Discovery is in for our new car prep and ceramic coating. So we are going to apply a two year coating and uh, nothing in the interior, just the exterior. And this thing is beautiful. I love doing new cars basically because they're relatively defect free. So we're going to examine the paint. We're gonna see what it needs, but of course we'll do our paint enhancement polish. We'll prep it. And this actually came to us this afternoon. We're working on this little Clubman, no, Countryman, little Mini Cooper Countryman, and we did our platinum service on it. If I have the video for that Countryman already up, it'll be up in the card. If not, wait for it. Um, I will have both of those videos, uh, this one and that one out, hopefully around the same time so I can connect them both. If you're enjoying videos like this, and I hope you are, consider subscribing and clicking that bell so you don't miss stuff. And as always, any of the tools or products that we use in the videos, you can find down below in the description. If there's something there that you see, or if there's something in the video that you see that's not down there, just shoot me a message and hopefully I'll be able to find it for you. Those links will go to either Amazon, Car Supplies Warehouse, or anywhere else that I can get those products. So we just gave it a full bath and decon and uh, didn't need much as far as clay barring or clay mitting. It was very, very smooth all the way to the bottom. So in that case, I'm not going to arbitrarily just clay bar it just for the sake of doing that because you can instill some light marring from the clay mitt or the clay bar. So if you don't need to do it, don't do it. The paint is this silver, very forgiving, which is awesome. Once we pull it in uh, to the garage, we'll see under the lights how everything looks, but everything cleaned up really, really well. We didn't see, or the owner didn't see any defects on the paint whatsoever. Uh, but of course, as we go through it with a fine tooth comb, we may find little things here and there. Uh, definitely the little black pieces around the trimming, the edges here, those will have to be polished. All the black parts up here will be polished. Uh, the rest of the silver paint, of course, will be polished, but I love silver. It's very forgiving, very easy to work with usually. But check this thing out. Very sleek. The new discoveries are very, very sleek. Look like a spaceship. And when you look in the inside, it really looks like a spaceship. This thing is awesome. Beautiful, beautiful design. So we will start on this tomorrow. Once the customer comes to pick up his countrymen, then we'll pull this thing in and it'll be sitting overnight and then we'll get started on the polishing and coatings tomorrow. And if you're wondering what chemicals we were using in the wash process, we used AM Details snow foam in here. Now, it's a snow foam and I guess it is kind of a European thing and it, and it kind of extends over here to the US that a lot of guys like to rinse and then they snow foam and they rinse off. That is a technique, that's one way of doing it. It's, it's a method that some guys like and they have their methodology, you know, the reasons why they do it, but it is not law, it is not rule. Um, you don't always have to do it that way. In fact, the APC rinsing method that we do um, was actually from Alan Medcraft at AM Details. I learned a lot of stuff from him and we incorporated that APC rinse into our wash process and it really makes a big difference in pre-cleaning the vehicle before we get to contact washing. Makes a big difference, we have found. But we don't foam and then wait and rinse it off and then wash with the two bucket method and all that. We simplify things because we found that we cut those things because they're not needed. Um, at least for us, they're not. If someone wants to go through that and they have their methodology, fine. But it is not a rule and we're not damaging anything. Our process is dialed in the way that works, not just for us, but it actually does work. It makes sense. So before you make any comments, question, you know, ask questions and use some reasoning and thinking ability. Um, you don't have to follow all of the detailer rules like that just because some detailers do it. I will take little points from other detailers and then adapt them to fit my own methodology and what works for us and our customers. So when we foam it, even using a snow foam, it's wax safe, which means it's a pH neutral soap, but it cleans very well and it's highly lubricant. It's very, very slick. It's an awesome slick soap. So I just use it as our normal soap. I don't use the soap itself for the cleaning action. I pre-clean the paint so that it is 
almost clean, just a little bit of a film on the paint. And you just need that extra lubrication with some agitation from the wash mitts to be able to safely remove that and glide it off the paint. But I use the AM snow foam. I can use any type of shampoo, snow foam, whether it's a high alkaline um, or a pH neutral, it doesn't matter to me. I use it the same exact way and I get the same exact results every single time. It works for us. So you don't have to worry too much about the type of shampoo. As long as it foams well and it's high, highly lubricant, that is what you're looking for. And I am a big believer in foam because it adds cushion. That is what I want, not just lubricity. Lubricity is good, but I want lubricity and cushion. I think both of those are highly important. If you just have lubrication without the bubbles in there to kind of act like bubble wrap and cushion the mitt against the paint, it'll still lift. It'll emulsify, it'll lift dirt and grime off the paint, but it'll trap it in those bubbles and glide it off the paint. That's my methodology. I've seen it work. It, it just works, it makes sense. Um, so I believe in having a soap that is highly lubricity. So I want a soap that is super slick, lots of lubrication and foam. Those two things, the most important to me because I have seen what they can do. So that's how we do our wash process. That's our methodology behind it. Uh, in the IK foamer here, we had PNS uh, all-purpose cleaner diluted four to one. And that is a great cleaner for wheels and tires. I don't need anything really stronger for new tires like this and, and wheels especially. So I did it on everything. And we did use a little bit of Gion iron. I actually did this before the wash process to see if we can, you know, wash away any iron particles and uh, get those detached from the paint before we contact wash. And it only found a little bit back here. The rest of it, pretty clean. Even the wheels didn't even react. So just back here, a few little dots here and there. And uh, it, you know, it picked, it picked up a little bit of the iron particles. It did its job. And as far as the APC, we use super clean diluted one to four. So those are the chemicals that we used um, in the whole washing and deconning phase. And now it's squeaky clean and ready for the next step. So it's the next day and the discovery is washed, deconned, prepped, it's dry, it's ready to go. So we're going to polish it and we're going to coat it. And this should be pretty straightforward, pretty easy, because as we look at the paint, man, it is in such good condition. Of course, it's brand new, but that doesn't mean anything. Sometimes we'll find defects. Sometimes it'll have a lot of defects on it. Now, there are a few things that we already noticed. All of the black pieces here definitely need polishing. Look at that. That needs some help, but these are always soft. The paint that they put on the pillars, well, actually that's not as bad, but we'll still polish that. Um, the paint that they put in the pillars here, it's always soft. The mirrors, yeah, not as bad, but still they do need to be polished. But as far as the paint goes, let's grab a light and look around, see if we spot anything. All the black pieces here, let's see. Oh wow, not bad at all. We'll lightly hand polish the grill, but that looks pretty decent. Like we mentioned, all the black pieces here we'll polish. Uh, let's see, get the light on here. Yep, we'll polish that. There's black all the way down here, and ooh, it looks like there might be some, some damage down there. So yeah, we'll, we'll check that out. But as we look at the paint, well, it's really hard to see here. All right, let's see. Oh wow, not bad at all. All the way to the bottom here, not bad. So really it is the black parts, the black painted parts, the pillars and the black parts down here that we're going to have to polish. There's some swirling there. So we'll definitely have to hit that. The silver paint shouldn't be too bad. The pillars on this side, yeah, really bad. So we'll definitely hit those and any other areas of concern that we see. How about the, uh, tail lights and well, they need a little bit of polishing but they're not too bad the black gloss here actually not too bad back here yeah we'll remove the plate okay not too bad that's good to know and of course the pillars up here yep that's really bad too all right so let's choose a polish and we'll start with all of the silver and as we go through each section of course we'll hit all of the black 
pillars here and any of the black pieces that we need to polish. So all of the silver paint is, well, it's almost done. Now we're gonna start working on all of the black gloss portions. We had to remove the plate back here and then the uh, plastic plate underneath it to be able to get all of the black gloss under here. But I wanna show you something. There's always something on even a brand new vehicle that, well, either we can fix or sometimes we can't. You see that little dot right there? I thought that was a dust nib, which it actually is a dust nib, but it is not correctable. So let's see if I can get really close to it and spot it. Aha, uh -huh. okay, so you can see it right there, but as the light passes over it, it actually does not stick out. It's completely flat. I know it's kind of hard to tell because it, like, it looks like it does have a little shadow to it, but when you feel it and when you really look up, you know, close, it's actually completely flat. I cannot feel it at all. So they did sand it down, but because of the metallics, the way that they lie, and it's underneath the clear coat, it looks like a little uh, dust nib that is raised, but it's not. It's underneath the clear coat. Can't do anything about that. That is an imperfection in the paint. One that really should have been caught. I mean, this is right near the, the door handle on the driver's side. That should have been removed. That's not cool. But, oh well, that's just what happened. So even on brand new vehicles, there's always something that you'll find. So now we're gonna start polishing on the black gloss portions. This combination, the orange pad and the fine polish or the finished polish from Epic, um, it can actually remove defects from it, but it doesn't finish it down. I could probably kick down to a black pad with the finishing polish, which maybe I'll, maybe I'll try that just to see what it does. But if it doesn't finish down the way I need it to, then we'll switch over to the Kosh Kemi um, fine cut and their pad combo because that works extremely well. So let's give it a try first with the uh, black finishing pad. Now, here's what I'm going to do first. You saw how bad these pillars looked, right? I'm gonna hit it with this first um, because this will clear it up, but it'll, it'll leave a little bit of micro hazing because um, probably of the aggression of the pad. So let's do that first and then we'll finish it down. So kind of like a two-step on these especially. I have the, uh, I'm gonna use this. Um, yeah. I was gonna try a black pad first with the finishing polish. Why? Because I'm, I'm curious, I just wanna see. So that did a great job of clearing it up, but you can see the micro marring is, yeah, I mean, it's there. It's hard to see, it's hard to see with the naked eye, but the camera just picks it up. And realistically, I could live with that because you can only see it on the camera. I know, it's, it's kind of crazy, but you can't see that in real life. Okay, so let's refine it a little bit more and let's see if we can make it even better because of the camera. Okay, that is much better. 
Oh yeah, that did it. So much better. It's really hard. I mean, it's just a little bit of dust. Um, that is really, really good. Now, if the camera has difficulty picking up a little bit of that micro haze, then you definitely can't see it with the naked eye. With the naked eye, this looks perfect. Perfect. And I mean, even with the camera, that's, that's impressive. It's having a hard time focusing because it can't, it can't pick up on anything. So, all right, that's a good sign. So, here's the trick. It's, it's a little deceiving because if you're dealing with soft paint, you think, oh, you have to go very, very gentle with the polisher. Sometimes it's counterintuitive. It's, it's very strange. So what I did is I put it on the highest speed and went slow, almost like a, count, a compounding step. Nice and slow and steady because if you went too fast and too gentle, it didn't do anything. It kept the micro marring right there. So you have to engage the polishes and that's what did it. That's what finished it down so nicely. Wow. All right, let's see if I can focus in with uh, manual focus here. I really can't, there we go. Wow. That did a really good job. You can see the tiniest amount of micro marring. It's really hard to pick up, but you can't see that with the naked eye one bit. That looks perfect. So I'm polishing all the black portions down here and unfortunately we've come across a little issue and I don't know what this stuff is. I've tried every chemical that we have, but you see those little spots there? Something has splattered on the bottom portions here. Some of it is in the wheel wells and I, I don't know what it is. It's not paint. It's not gum. It's not tar. I have tried everything from lacquer thinner to citrol to Koshkemi Ulex, all the strong chemicals that I have, and it's not touching it. The only thing I could do was start to try to scrape it off a little bit with a plastic razor, and even that didn't do anything. Now, the only other alternative that I would have is to wet sand it. However, this is on plastic. I can't determine how much uh, clear coat is on there. So at this point, I'll just have to inform the customer that there is something in the bottom portions here that cannot be removed. At least I can't remove it. I'm not going to risk it. Um, it could be, I mean, a body shop could simply sand it off, reshoot it, re-clear it, and it would be done. It would be repaired. Um, or I could risk it and try to wet sand it off and have to compound it and polish it. And whatever this stuff is, it has also left some pock marking in the paint. So again, to try to remove that is risky because I can't tell how much clear coat is on here. So the best, I can, the best thing I can do is simply polish it. I mean, it looks good, it's, it's all swirl free, but those little marks there, I can't do anything about, unfortunately. So, and it's all down the side here. Not so much the rear portions here, but up here is the worst. And I tried as best as possible to get it off and it just will not remove. So I don't know what it is. Unfortunately, I'm not gonna try to risk removing it. So I'll simply have to inform him of what that, whatever that stuff is, it's not uh, being able to be removed and he'll have to bring it to a shop if he wants to or bring it back to the dealer and they'll repaint it, reshoot it. Um, and then he'll have to you know, bring it back to us and we'll recoat it. I'm gonna ceramic coat it anyway because even if he does bring it to the shop, they're going to sand it down, or at least I'll tell them, you know, I'll tell him that I coated it. But uh, we'll see what he wants to do. He may not even care. I don't know. But for a vehicle like this, I would want to have that repainted and, and fixed for a brand new vehicle. So, oh well, sometimes you come across that. That's actually the worst that I've ever seen on a brand new vehicle, whatever that stuff is. There's a, there's a lot of construction here. So it could be cement it could be something industrial i don't know it's it's crappy but at least all the black portions are polished and they look really really nice all the black portions up here are polished pillars are looking awesome 
all the mirror portions here. I had to actually use a little foam applicator to get behind here, um, but everything is looking great. Oh, I need to do the roof. So let me do that next.
the disco is done. Everything now is complete. We just did some of the uh, interior glass because it needed it. Couldn't let that go. So that is now looking beautiful. Paint is looking gorgeous. All the black gloss has been polished. We tried our best to get, you know, 90% plus on the black. There are some areas that, uh, I don't know, they were pretty, pretty bad, some deep gouges. Um, but just in small areas, you'd have to really search to find it. Otherwise, everything is looking good. The wheels were coated in G-Technic wheel armor and uh, just used the T1 tire and trim on the tires. And I'm using this new little applicator. Um, oh, not in that chair. Here it is, this one right here. I am really liking it. I like the size, easy to hold, and this blue backing here is a stiff backing, and then the foam, of course, can smush down. But this is nice to get low profile tires and fatter tires. Instead of having a round applicator or a big square one, I think I have found my perfect foam tire applicator. I still like to use the brush. You see us use that brush a lot for applying dressings on like big truck tires. But this, I love this now. This is my new favorite tire applicator. So I'll have links to this down below, just on Amazon. Um, I just got a pack of them to try them out, see if I liked them. And yes, I do like them a lot. So they are awesome. Um, you also may have noticed the little coating caddy. I've showed this in a couple of other videos, but this is from Beads Racks. I'll have this down below and they are awesome to be able to hold your ceramic coatings. And I actually like that it's a large panel like this. You can put it on, you know, different types of carts and everything stays put. Even if you have a square bottle and it doesn't fit in those, you know, round holes there, you can just place it on here and everything is very, very sturdy. You could even bolt it down to something and then it won't move at all. So love this design. Thank you, Matt from Beads Racks awesome design on the caddy uh, coating caddy here. Once again, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or comments, let me know down below. Tools, products will be in the links down below in the description. And if you see something that we've used that is not down there for whatever reason, uh, just shoot me a message and I'll try to send you over those links if you're interested. And as always, if you haven't subscribed, please do and click that bell so you don't miss stuff. And we'll see you guys later. Have a great week.